this isn't over Tell me Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Well, good morning, church, and uh, welcome to Easter 2020. It's a prayer that this service finds you doing well uh, wherever you happen to be on this Resurrection Sunday. And while Easter brings a, a joyful and hopeful message, we know that people are going through many challenges in these days, and we need to do what we can to support and to encourage one another. I think one powerful uh, source of encouragement is to know that people are praying for us, even as we pray for one another. Let's take some time to pray together right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we are able to gather in this manner today, even though we're unable to be physically present, but we know that you are present, that you are with us. We thank you for this uh, special Easter Sunday. We think of the victory of the cross, of the empty tomb, of new life in Christ. How beautiful, how powerful to be able to remember that. Father, we also think of uh, people who are going through uh, discouraging times today, challenging times. We think of people who have lost uh, employment, uh, people who are struggling financially, people who are dealing with a whole lot of uncertainty, I pray that you would minister to those needs, that people would sense your presence, your goodness in their lives. Today, Lord, we think also of uh, the Bali family, as uh, today marks the, the fourth anniversary of Michaela's mysterious disappearance. Lord, we know that you know all things, and I pray that you would reveal the truth of what has happened to her so that there could be closure uh, for her family. And uh, Lord, we just ask that you would be uh, glorified in that situation. Father, we pray too for our health workers. We pray that you would keep them safe. We pray that you would 
give them wisdom as they deal with different situations. We continue to pray for our government leaders on all different levels through our city, through our province, through our nation. Lord, give them wisdom in these unique days and help them to make good uh, decisions that will help people, that will keep people safe, and that will uh, guide along this uh, pandemic to uh, a positive, more positive uh, resolution. We pray too, Lord, that you would be with those who are doing research and looking for uh, treatments and for a vaccine that could bring uh, a substantial uh, help to this situation. We pray that you would uh, speed that process along as well. And Lord, in this time, we pray that you would give us patience, that you would help us to just rest and to trust in you. We pray for ministries uh, that are affected by these challenges as well. We think of the Padamores today. Pray that you would be with Grant and Nettie, their ministry with uh, Carry the Kettle. Pray that you would make them effective and, and, and open doors of opportunity that they can share the good news of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you too for the faithfulness of your people, for people who continue to give to uh, the ministry here and other ministries that we support. May you bless uh, the gifts that will come in uh, over the next week. And uh, thank you for those that have come in already. We pray that you would bless each gift and giver. May it... Uh, enlarge your kingdom work. Thank you, Lord, that we can worship you now. We just want to commit this whole service into your care. May you guide us and bless us by your spirit, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, welcome everyone to our, our church YouTube video. Uh, we thank you for joining us on this Easter Sunday. We thank you that we can, we can praise God for the empty tomb. So, I pray that you would uh, find, this, um, find this inspiring, find it uh, a, a time when you can worship together in your family. Of course, we're in very unique circumstances right now, but we can, uh, we can worship together anyway. Let's worship.
Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still. of what that means for us as people. We just thank you for who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. This is the time of year when people make references to C&E Christians, the people who tend to show up at church only on Christmas and Easter. Uh, some years ago, there were two women who were dressed up in their new Easter outfits as they walked amid the crowd strolling toward the entrance of a large church. And finally, one of them bursted out impatiently. Now, wouldn't you think that these people who do nothing but go to church Sunday after Sunday would stay home on Easter and leave room for the rest of us? Well, there's lots of room this year. But of course, no one can go. Uh, not those who rarely go, nor those who have a habit of attending church services on a regular basis. And I wonder who will miss it more. Of course, some, of, some regular church attenders uh, sometimes come to that place in life uh, where they're not able to attend on an ongoing basis due to age and health issues. And perhaps these days uh, will give all of us a better appreciation 
for what some of our shut-ins go through on a regular basis. When we're not able to attend church, we, we do lose a certain amount of uh, connection with one another. Uh, one of the blessings of being part of a church family is, is being able to catch up with people uh, on a regular basis, right? Being able to share our joys and our concerns with one another. Uh, praying together, singing together, learning and growing together. They're all really hard to do when you're apart and not connected. However, being apart for a time does not change the truth of who we are in Christ. And while going to church is an important habit for followers of Christ to embrace, especially since the church was and is a God idea, uh, going to a church building alone does not make a person a Christian. And as has been said, uh, you know, going to church uh, doesn't make a person a Christian any more than sitting in a garage turns a person into a car. Today, we can be the church. We are the church. As we gather virtually and in small groups as fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ. If you're not his follower, I pray that you will become one today. As we reflect uh, for a time on something else that was empty instead of being full. If you have your Bible, I encourage you to uh, take it and open it to the fourth gospel fourth book in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and then John's gospel account. John uh, chapter 20, and uh, we'll look at uh, verses uh, 1 to verse 9. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. I love uh, the honesty, the realism of, of the scriptures. I mean, this was a very confusing and painful time for Jesus' followers. A week ago, amid the palm-waving crowds, there had been such optimism. Uh, but going through Thursday, the, the betrayal, the arrest, uh, Friday, the horrific sight of Jesus on the cross, Saturday, a whole lot of grief and disbelief. How would they go on? What would they do now without Jesus? Tears, uh, restless nights, an ache in the pit of your stomach, a wish that one could wake up and this whole nightmare would be over. But no, it was real. Jesus was dead. His body had been placed in a grave, in this case a rock-hewn tomb. But as Sunday dawned, Mary Magdalene was confronted with the sight of an open door. The stone had been removed from the entrance. Well, let's back up a bit. Uh, John chapter 19 makes it clear that Jesus uh, was dead. Of course, uh, Jesus had been flogged before being crucified, a practice that took many people to the point of death even bef before being hung on a cross. Soldiers whose job it was to inflict death uh, confirmed that Jesus was dead. Uh, that spear had been thrust into Jesus' side to make certain 
that he was fully dead. When it came to Roman crucifixions, the general practice was to leave the corpses out on the cross to be consumed by animals of prey. A lack of a proper burial was a further humiliation of death by crucifixion. The Jews did have a more uh, refined respect for the dead, which is reflected in the actions of uh, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, who obtained permission from the Romans uh, to give Jesus a proper burial and to do so before the Sabbath began. By the end of uh, of Friday, there's no doubt that Jesus is no longer among the living. Further, his body was prepared and wrapped according to Jewish custom. It had been placed in a special location, not not a public cemetery, but a private new garden tomb owned by Joseph. And that large stone had been put in place to cover the doorway. And due to the stir of public attention surrounding Jesus, uh, further measures had been put into place. And we know from uh, Matthew's account that Pilate had ordered that a seal to be put on the rock door, as well as posting guards for a number of days, just to be certain that no further issues would come up with any of Jesus' followers. It was a new week. The Sabbath was over. It was early Sunday morning. Mary headed out to the site of Jesus' burial. In our grief, we, we don't always know what to do when someone we love has been taken from us. People go to the grave. They, they set up memorials at accident sites. This week, we were reminded of that tragedy that took place two years ago on that highway intersection for those on the Humboldt Broncos bus. Memories still fresh in people's minds, even two years later. I'm sure that Mary just wanted to be close to to Jesus in some way. She was forever grateful to Jesus who brought her freedom as she she was delivered uh, from the bondage of Satan. With that sight of an open door, Mary was confronted with a perplexing mystery. Perplexing mystery. Why was it open? Uh, I mean, who opened it? I mean, her mind began to race as did her body as she ran towards some of the disciples who were also on their way to the gravesite. And she, she blurts out the words in confused excitement. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. As a pastor, I've done quite a few uh, funerals over the years. And I remember in my early years of ministry, it was... Uh, Kind of that strange feeling at first when the funeral home would sometimes drop off the casket at church. uh, And then they'd come back later for the service in the afternoon. And it would just be me and the departed in the church sometimes. And I have to tell you that not once did a body move or go missing. They stay where they are put. Mary quite rightly assumed that somebody had taken Jesus' body. And when she says they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, uh, the they in mind is the authorities. Uh, No other explanation really makes sense. Of course, many people have come up with theories to try and disprove uh, the resurrection. Some have said that Jesus really wasn't dead. Uh, he, He just fainted. People assumed he was dead and In the cool of the tomb, he revived and then he walked out. A whole lot of problems with this theory, including the the physiological realities of crucifixion. Not to mention the impossibility of a physically exhausted individual being able to move this mass of stone that took a number of people to set it in place. How about the theory that his disciples stole the body? Once more, there are a whole lot of problems. Uh, The Gospels hardly present the disciples before the cross as a courageous group who would take on some Roman guards with ease. 
Uh, Remember Peter in fear for his life had denied even knowing Jesus just a few days earlier. And after Pentecost though the the disciples were a courageous group who did amazing things. But, But this is not the picture that we get of them as they like Mary and the other women uh, were caught up in their grief. Yes, later most of them would uh, go on to defend the power and the truth of the resurrection. Would all of them have been willing to die for a lie if it was not true? One or two, maybe. But I but doubt that all of them would give their lives. I love the picture in our text. Upon hearing uh, Mary's report, uh, Peter and John, they, they break into this foot race and, and Peter really wants to win, right? It, it's in his DNA to win, to be first. Uh, but John races by and he gets to uh, the tomb first and John stops at the doorway uh, we don't know why. Maybe he didn't want to be defiled or, uh, by going in. Or, or maybe he was just a, all a little too strange for him. And he didn't know what to do or what to think. And then Peter, huffing and puffing, he shows up. And to the form, he just bursts right on inside. Eventually, John goes in inside as well. And in that moment, the, the mystery deepens. Uh, look once more at verses uh, 6 and 7. Verses 6 and 7. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Does any of this make any sense? I mean, who in their right mind would take away a body and leave behind the burial suit. A grave robber would not have left the clothes in such a way. Uh, If the Romans wanted to move the body, they would have taken it all wrapped up, cloth and uh, spices and all. The way that the linen cloth was still laying there, it was as if the body had come right up through it, leaving everything in place, except for that headpiece that had been folded up neatly in. Place to the side. The vivid description does not fit a story uh, that some person just made up in their minds. Even stronger is the case that, that two men saw it. One person's evidence was not enough in a Jewish court, but two men. That was a different story, according to uh, Deuteronomy 19, verse 15, where it says, One witness is not enough to convict a man accused of any crime or offense. He must have committed, he may have committed rather. A matter must be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. Of course, not only had Peter and John seen, but also Mary and the other women uh, could be added to the number of witnesses who were present there at the tomb. A number of them saw the open door and the mystery of the missing body. Graves are not supposed to be empty uh, once they're filled, but this one was. Initially, we find that there were different responses to the empty tomb from Jesus' followers. For John, it was a reason to believe. A reason to believe. Consider... Verse 8. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. He saw and believed. But then are added these words in verse 9. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Uh, We imagine Peter coming out from the tomb, still kind of scratching his head. What has happened? (laughs) 
It took some time for Jesus' followers to really process all of this. And, and, and later in this chapter, we, we read the account of Thomas, who's he's not present the first time uh, that Jesus appears to his disciples uh, post-resurrection. Uh, remember, he wanted proof for himself, and, and, and not just the word of the others. John 20, uh, 25 So the other disciple told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. For John, uh, the moment of belief came much earlier Back in the garden tomb, right? He, he saw and he believed. He, he did not see Jesus just in uh, the grave clothes and the empty tomb. And in his heart, he knew that the resurrection was we real. Still, the vast majority of the early witnesses to these events came to believe not because they could not find a body but because they actually saw a resurrected Jesus standing before them. Before long, the early Christians would understand how the resurrection fit in with God's perfect salvation plan as uh, laid out all along in God's word, even going back to the early writings of the Old Testament, right back to Genesis itself. And we find this key belief affirmed in Paul's letter to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 to 7. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter, and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Yes, on the other side of the cross, the disciples and early believers discovered the truth of the living Jesus, the one who had indeed defeated sin, death, and the grave. How about you? Do you have a reason to believe in Jesus today? After presenting himself to Thomas, uh, Jesus said in, in John uh, 20, 29, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. Today, uh, many Christian churches are empty uh, due to COVID-19 uh, restrictions, uh, but that doesn't keep believers from celebrating the hope and life that sprung forth from the empty tomb. Listen to how John concludes uh, chapter 20 of his gospel account uh, concerning Jesus. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. I hope that you'll take some time to praise God on this special Easter Sunday. If you know what it is to have that life abundant and life eternal in Jesus, it's a great time to praise our Lord. If you don't have that life, you don't have that assurance that you will one day have a resurrected eternal body, I, I would really encourage you to look to Jesus today. Look at him in faith. Uh, consider the evidence Look at it, study it, consider the witnesses. And if you really take the time to do that honestly, you will discover that Jesus is indeed the way, the truth, and the life.
Praise God for the truth of the empty tomb. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we uh, thank you that we can rejoice in the truth. That indeed the, the tomb was empty. That Jesus was alive again. He had been victorious. He had accomplished what you sent him to do. And Lord, today that gives us peace. That gives us hope. That gives us joy. Regardless of what we're going through and the circumstances around us. It does not change the truth of what you have done for us in Christ. I pray that people will celebrate that and that people will look to you and they, like John, will come to be followers of you, to believe what you have done for them. Thank you, Lord, for this time together. Thank you that we can worship you today in spirit and in truth. Thank you, in Jesus' name, amen. Join us again in worship. Oh
gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer. There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I
bring us joy because of the empty grave. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to thank you for entering into worship uh, with us on this special Sunday. If you have any needs or just want to talk with somebody, I, I ask that you would uh, contact myself or uh, Pastor Parker or the church office. Or Our contact information is on our website and our weekly uh, bulletins that are available online. Have a blessed Easter. God bless.